Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the most magical show in the keyboard community. I'm your host, Merlin, and tonight is Porting with Ports. Today, we have the Exent 65% board, which I will be porting into QMK in the next few minutes. Just wanted to do a special shout out to Karcha, who lent this to me. Well, he didn't actually lend it to me because he hasn't actually received it yet. This is, here, let me show you guys. Karcha won this during Top Clack's three year anniversary. And yeah, it's supposed to be on its way to him, but I, I intercepted it. <laughs> Long story, story short, Karcha wanted me to put QMK on it, so I just contacted Quakums and was like, hey, can I take care of this before it gets to him in Europe? Because it's going to cost a lot to have it shipped to me and me to ship it back. So let me just grab it while it's still here. So yeah, that's what it is. That's what we'll be doing tonight. Um, just as a little surprise thing for tonight, this is one of the very few episodes in which I have a built board and a PCB. This is one of the very few episodes that that's gonna happen. So tonight, and for tonight only, I will be porting the exempt while I type on an exempt. So yeah, that's very rare, very, very rare. Let's see, how many people do we have tonight? Oops, wrong keyboard. <laughs> oh, shoot. All the keyboards are not actually plugged in. Let me try that again. Let's see. We've got 22 viewers tonight. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Let's see. Oh, Karcha is actually in tonight. Ah, yes. Okay, Karcha. I'm going to try my best to get this ported into QMK by the time you have to leave for work. So wish me luck. But before we start, I do want to point out that this is porting with ports. And as usual, I have a port to drink tonight. Um, this is the same port that I've been drinking since last week. You can see I've made it to maybe, what? That's about a third of the bottle, you'd say. This is a Otima 10 Tawny Porto that you can purchase from Costco actually for roughly $18. It's a smaller bottle than I usually drink, 500 milliliters with 20% alcohol. Um, it's actually been aged for 10 years in oak cask. And I always have to do this because I need to get the get those tasting notes. Where's Otima 10-year tawny port? Rich tawny color with an excellent nose of nuts and hints of mature fruit. On the palate, light and delicate. Beautifully rounded with hints of dried fruit and a long, elegant finish. So yeah, um, this, this is actually going into my top three on the show so far. My favorites have been the, the Taylor Fladgate 10-year tawny the Whidbey Island Tawny, and this one. Actually, I'd put the Dows up there too, so maybe that's my top four. Just don't know, but this is definitely up there, up there. So before I start, just gonna set this all up. I'm gonna put the clue board away, and I'm gonna plug this in. Oops, that's not, it's not a USB-C board. It is a bootmapper client. And right before the stream, I was actually madly putting keycaps on this. Come on. There we go. Light up. Oh, there we go. It's lighting up now. There we go. I So I actually don't know what the key map is on this. Let's take a quick look as to what it's supposed to be. Ugh. That's a bad feeling space bar. You guys hear that? Sounds really mushy. Oh man. Okay, well I 
I will deal with it. Let's see. Let's test out the board. Test keyboard. Let's see what each of these keys do, because I will need this when porting. Here we go. Um, It's not registering, and it's, it's an escape. What the freak? Oh, that prints off the RGB. Okay. With HHKB layout so far. So this board isn't ported yet. This is whatever came with the board. Okay. And yeah, there are some keys that are, aren't even programmed yet. So hopefully we'll get that program once I get QMK working. But yeah, let me pour myself a glass first. A glass of my sweet, sweet Connie Port. The exempt. Mm, how, how many glasses will I go through tonight? Hopefully not that long. Because I did find new tools to improve my, my porting procedures. Especially lots of thanks to Mr. Keebs. Yep, that is as good as I remember it to be. Delicious. Kartchup, thank you for subscribing. Okay, so before I port this board, just a few things about this. Um, as you can see, it's got very large bezels, <laughs> you know? It's like how many switches can go in here? One, it's like two, two and a half units on each side and on the bottom that's definitely more than one u yeah it's really really thick um it's your basic 65 percent format uh usb actually let me plug it take it out there we go to show it off a bit more so you can see that usb port is all the way in there so I was having a little bit of trouble plugging this in. You can see it's thick. And hold on. Let me just play some music for you all. There we go. Yeah. It's a pretty heavy board. Despite it having like an acrylic back, it's a pretty heavy board. Um, you may have seen last week I was porting the Skog Light from Percent Studios. This board is heavier than my Skog Light. It, it's that heavy. I think it's because it actually has a brass plate. And I don't know what this is. Is, is this aluminum? I'm not sure. There we go. Originative, Co, Rama, TGR, and I don't recognize that last one. Aseno? A scenic, a scenic. Not sure what it is, but yeah, that is the accent. I'm actually quite jealous of Karcha because I just told Quakeum that hey, um, send me the board that is not in QMK and I'll get it and I'll get it into QMK. And I didn't want to be too picky, but I secretly wanted this one instead of the Skog. And now that I got a Skog that's broken. I even want this more. Karcha, do I have to mail it to you? It's so nice. <laughs> yeah, Duncan Yo-Yo, it looks like stainless, right? Yeah, it's really nice. <laughs> Karcha just laughs. 
Okay, okay, okay. Let's let's get to the actual porting. Let's get this all in. Let's figure it out. Um, yeah, so this is a boot mapper client board. And I don't know who made the PCB. But I'm sorry. Just one more note. Just one more note. So you guys can look deep. Deep into that hole. You guys see that USB hole? You can see that the hole is wider than a mini B. So you can actually fit a USB C in there. Um, I've heard rumors, not to, not to be confirmed. Well, I actually have one of those PCBs, so I, I probably could try try and confirm it. But supposedly, these um, support a ZL65 as well, the same PCB that goes into a Zephyr. So maybe, maybe. Um, I am Karcha. If that's something you're interested in, you can look it up and find out more information. There we go. Plugged in. There we go. Okay. This is the actual PCB. Duncan Yo Yo, you're hosting me. Thank you. <laughs> Here we go. Yep. Exempt. That's what the PCB looks like. Looks pretty nice, if I might say so myself. Designed by Quad Cube. I don't know who Quad Cube is. It's got. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 underglow LEDs. Supports in switch backlighting. Uh, what else? What else can I say about the PCB? Just from the quick traces that I can almost see on it, this looks like. Okay. It looks like. The switch matrix kind of matches the physical layout. What I mean with that is that the columns are all, you know, from the from the topmost switch to the bottommost switch goes in in like one column like that, and it matches the electrical matrix as well. On some boot mapper client boards, most notably those that came directly from Win Keyless or those who copied Win Keyless. Um, this, the electrical matrix wouldn't match the physical matrix. So for example, you would get like something like this, right? It would just go, actually, this is a better row. This rightmost row, which it's just one column with one, two, three, four, five switches. What would happen is the electrical matrix would be like, there's one switch, there's the other switch, there's another switch, there's another switch, and finally the last switch. It would go all over the place. So yeah, not. I am glad to see that that is not the case because that will make my life so much easier. <laughs> that blue light looks like the first movie of Fast and Furious. Oh really? Does look good. So I do have to poke fun at Karcha here. Um, if it's if it's your first time on this show, um, I do not believe in ISO, but Karcha is from the EU. He didn't say where he was, and he specifically requested an ISO support, an ISO layout. So because he is a, a customer, <laughs> I'm gonna have to do that. So for the first time on this stream, you're gonna see me put an ISO layout in. <laughs> okay, let's get to it. Let's see. First things first, whenever you're porting a keyboard, you actually need to figure out how everything is matched. So the way I do that is, I like to pull out the keyboard layout editor, like so. Um, what I have here is 
a standard 65% layout. Doesn't actually match what the physical thing is here, but I'll take care of that later. You've got your 2U backspace, 1.75U right shift, three 1U keys, um, and just that entire column over here. Yeah, it says, I sold best layout, Merlin believe. No, no, I will never believe. You'll never make me. Okay, here goes. The most fun part ever. Not. Okay, I'm gonna start. Figure out the columns. It's really nice when you can find the columns that, that, that quickly. <laughs> I'm right-handed, so it's sometimes hard to hold it in place. One, two, three, four. Wow, this resistor is super close to the microcontroller pin. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna have to pull out my little at mega 32A pinout. There we go, that's the one I want. This guy, I want this guy. There we go. So one, two, three, four, five. Looks like that was pin D7. That's the column. So I'm just going to mark these guys as pin D7 for the column. D7. There we go. Looks good. Looks good. Ooh. Man, I feel like I, I haven't enjoyed a port as good as this since the Taylor Flatgate. pin C2 C2 oh god C2 You sound muted or far from the mic. Let me move the mic closer. Or I can up the volume just a little bit. There we go. Jerk Chicken, hello, thanks for joining in. Mm, hopefully I don't spill my wine on this. I have never spilled wine on any board. 
and hopefully I will keep it that way. <laughs> Freak. I think there's something wrong with the four key on this board. Hey Karcha, um, do you know who built this board? Cause it arrived to me or already built. I'm gonna say that I'm not impressed with how it's built. I'm far from impressed. Space bar is C six. Quickum seems surprised as well. Interesting. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, have fun taking it apart because I would highly recommend that you do because this space bar blows. It's so like, it's so mushy. It's probably not e not even clipped and it's rattly. here. C7. One, two, three, four, A7. Okay. A7. I'm actually going through this pretty quick, so that's a that's a good sign. Okay. 
five. Man, this is really Swiss cheese. It's hard to tell where the holes are. Really? D7. One, two, three, four, A zero. What? Okay. It's kind of weird. Oh man. Guys, check this out. Check this out. This is the down arrow key. There we go. That's where the down arrow is supposed to be. That looks like that position alone can fit three different switch positions. Holy cow. That's insane. Shift is A1. Okay. Oof. That's difficult. Okay. So not only is that down arrow, like, what do you call that? Not only is the down arrow supporting multiple switches, it's also supporting multiple switch matrix positions. So I'm gonna actually have to put switches in just to properly gauge where, which leg I should be. Nope, that's not it. There we go. That's the leg that I want. Okay, that makes more sense. The same as the shift key. 
There we go, A1. I could have guessed that, but oh well. No, don't die on me. One, two, three, four. Four. One, two, three, four. A zero. Okay. It's also A zero. What's this enter key? Ah. is also a zero. One, two, three. Really? A one. Yeah, okay. So I, I always forget to say this, but anyone has any questions about whatever I'm doing or just about keyboards in general, feel free to ask away and I will Accommodate or someone on chat will answer your question with these later but it's an a3 which doesn't make sense <laughs> A4. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna have to fix that bottom row up a bit, but I would guess it would be, and it's hard, it's hard to really know at this point. Let's see, there's that, is, there's that leftmost arrow another another one get that guy yeah that makes makes sense so this guy would be this guy would be a Okay. Isn't 
this is why you have loose switches. And there we go. I did lose that switch. Want that guy next. One down, A6. And the last switch would be, it's too close. There we go, that's it. Not lose, liberated. <laughs> Last one would be the fourth one down on the right side. One, two, three, four, A7. Whew. Okay. This is going to be an interesting one. Uh. I'm pretty confident up till about the middle here and the sides here, but this, this whole thing here, I, I have a feeling I might have messed up a few things, but I'll find out once I actually get to programming. Now it's time to do the actual rows. The rows should be easier, hopefully, hopefully, we'll see. With any luck, it'll be just as easy as the columns. Not all in the same row. It's unfortunate. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, B, zero. Okay. So it goes from the escape key to the backspace is B, zero. Then it changes for some odd reason on that very last key. Very last key is a B5. Why? Why did they change it for that very last key? I have no clue. Let's see. Duncan Yo-Yo says, I've always wondered, for people who design a PCB with 32U4, what do they use if not QMK? Like before this was ported, what firmware did it use? Do people really go through the trouble of making their own firmware for those chips when QMK exists? Um. Yeah, so this guy originally ran boot mapper client. Talisman, thank you for your one bit donation. But yeah, uh, this originally ran boot mapper client. It is the de facto choice for 32A based keyboards. In terms of 32U4, 
Um, the popular firmwares were Gigon and O2D. Um, and probably around 2012, 2013 was TMK. Um, QMK probably started making an appearance around 2014, 2015. Yeah. I don't know the exact dates. But yeah, um, QMK and TMK are the only open source ones. B2 Okay B2 Oops Not there That would be B3. And I would guess this very last row would be B4. Just a hunch. Entire row is B four. B four. Not not B forty four. B four. Perfect. Okay. Show you guys what I have right now. Let's see, Titan, thank you for subscribing to Twitch Prime for three months. Yan is prepping volcano switches. Oh yeah, that is almost in our possession these days. But here, let me talk about this little matrix that I've seen so far. Um, for the most part, it, it makes sense. 
like all, all of the rows here, like this top row is B0 all the way down to B4. But for some reason, it didn't go all the way till the end. This column here seems to be its own row for some odd reason. So they used B5. And this very bottom row is all B4 all the way across. And I am more sure about the rows than I am about the columns because I always mess up the columns for some odd reason. So I'll have to check this right hand side really, really quick. Cozy says, wow, a BMC board where an entire row is actually one row. I know, right? So strange, so strange. So I'm not an expert on where to put on like proper microcontroller placement. But like, for example, this guy right here, the microcontroller is right there, which would place it right before your shift key. Let's see. So it's like if you press that too hard i don't know maybe that's a that could cause problems who knows <laughs> all right all right okay i think i'm about ready to start programming this wow i've only gone when did i start 7 30 less than an hour i already have it all mapped out that is that is unheard of Rat, rat, rat says, oh, that is weird. The right column uses a different row. Yeah, I know, it's weird. I don't know like why designers do this because maybe it's how they lay it out on the board, like when you're actually routing it, but I've never built a PCB before, but usually when you do a PCB, you start out with a schematic and then from there you go on to actually laying out all the parts on the board and I find it hard to believe that it would be harder to do it on a boot mapper client board versus a at mega 32u4 board because if you look at at mega 32u4 boards you'll see that it's very sequential it's like from left to right all these switches are on the same row from top to bottom, all these switches are on the same column. And at Mega 32U4s actually have less pins than 32As. So it's like, mm, don't know, don't know. I do have to say that out of all the bootmapper client boards I've seen, it's only the TGRs, I believe, that actually... Oh, it's the TGRs and, and the Singas that actually kind of keep it straight. And since this was actually... There, there was input from Singa, I mean, from TGR from this, maybe that's why it ended up li like this. But who knows? Who knows? Okay. Let's see what to do now. Oh yes, okay. So last last stream, Mr. Keebs reached out to me and was like, hey Merlin, you should try out this new tool that I created. It'll make your life easier. So I said, okay, let's do it. I think he's, uh, I can't type on this board. Trickery? That's, there we go, that's him. 186 repos. Okay, uh, what was the name of this tool? It was just trickery. You know what? I'm just gonna go on Discord really quick. And grab the link from this guy. What is that link? Aha, here we go, got it. Oh, 
Okay, so what we have here is basically a... <laughs> Cody says 186, damn girl. Yeah, I know, I'm like, why? Why do you have so many forked, so many repos made? But what we have here is actually an amazing tool in which as long as you do it like the way I did, in which this top row, the top leftmost legend, is the, the column and the bottom leftmost legend is the is the row you can then populate your whole board like this grab the resulting raw file copy it paste it in the KLE raw data click out of it it'll come out with all the pins that you need then when you press convert boom you now have a layout macro, which I will talk about later. But this this solves so much time because I don't need to actually type this all out. I don't need to guess which ones are used, which ones don't get used. And yeah, as long as you have this, pretty much QMK firmware has been practically automated. Like, I think if he were to add a little more inputs in this, like if you could put like the name of the keyboard leds and stuff like that he could pretty much just automate the porting process as long as you know how how to use like a multimeter yeah so M mr keebs you are pretty awesome for doing this i was I, I was joking with him earlier i'm just like hey man can you write like some tooling that would just automate my show so i just Press the button and boom. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm going to put away this PCB for the time being. And we are going to start coding. Coding. Because now most things have been automated. Like, no roads left. Also known as xenophobia. I don't think he's on the stream tonight. He made another tool which takes your KB firmware JSON file and converts it to like QMK firmware that's up to up to the new standard. So we already have two tools that fully automate that entire process. Makes things so much easier. Um, like, as I said, you don't even need to really know how to code anymore. You just have to know how to use a multimeter and yeah, if you use like a multimeter like what I have here, this is 25 bucks. 25 bucks, really, really simple. All you do is you set it to, to the diodes, uh, press the select button until you get to the beeping mode. And then when you tap them together, it beeps. It's so much easier. Well, that's really all you need to do. And I guess if you, if you know how a key is generally put together, you can, all you really need, need to do is just invest probably an, an hour of your time and you'll be able to find the entire switch matrix for a 65% board. So yeah, that's, that's the cool thing. So now we're gonna get, get to actually porting it, writing some code. But at this point, half my work is done for me because I personally think this is the hardest part. <laughs> this is the hardest part of porting. And Mr. Keeps just completely simplified it. KLE to QMK dot Mr. Keeps dot com. And with that, I think I'm going to start talking about our sponsors. Some of the sponsors of this show. Who I really like very much. I'm gonna do it while I drink another glass of wine, if you guys don't mind. <laughs> Let's see. I'm gonna go in order of the things that people have done for me. So the first one is Zeal PC. Zeal PC. No, I can't type. There we go, zealpc.net. Um, I've known Zeal for quite a long time. I was part of the 
Zelio R1 group buy, and I've been a great fan of all of his switches. In fact, they're probably my switch of choice when it comes to tactiles. Um, if you hit up my link, port is the hardest thing on the show because <laughs> it's hard alcohol. Nice one. Yeah, if you guys hit hit up my link and buy buy products from his site using that, I do get a small kickback. But definitely, I support Zeal a lot. Though I am still waiting for my Zeno. I've been waiting for quite a number of months. It was supposed to come in March, so hopefully within the next month I'll get it. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> yeah, hopefully he saw that. Like I've I've. I've actually gone up to Canada a few times. I've kind of did like a family trip or just like a like a quick getaway just to enjoy Canada and also find an excuse to go by and be like, hey, is my Xeno ready yet? Is my Xeno ready yet? The second guy on my list who became a sponsor is actually Dixie Mac. So Dixie Mac is currently selling Dracula. Um, it's based not on the character. Well, I guess it is based on the character, but it's 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 based mainly on the IDE theme, which is based on the Dracula character. So yeah, definitely check them out. Um, Dixie is, I think he's one of the biggest vendors at the moment. Let's go, Dixie. There we go. Yeah, I too get a small kickback if you use that to buy any product from his website. I got the chance to meet Dixie for the very first time in Texas, and I met him again in Seattle just a few months ago. He's a nice guy. I like him a lot. And I think if you... He does this cool promo that if you do like pipe symbol git dot Dracula, um, you have a chance to to actually win Dracula. So it has to be something like, like for example, like, my pipe symbol, there we go. I believe it's that, git.dracula. If you do that, um, and you are in a server that Dixie Mech is on. He chooses randomly someone who can win Dracula. So that's a cool thing to do. Um, next up, I'm trying to remember the order of people who have become my, my, um, sponsors. Yeah, Novel Keys. Novel Keys is up next. Novel Keys is up next. So Novel Keys is doing something really, really cool. Oops. Wrong, wrong segment, but here we go. Um, Novel Keys is doing really, really cool right now. Um, not only does he have a few key sets in group buy, but there's one in particular that I want to point out. GMK Pretty in Pink. So this kit runs until October 31st. But the thing about this, the thing about this set in particular is that all proceeds will go towards fighting breast cancer. And I think this is an amazing deal. Like, I'm personally not a fan of the colorway, to be honest. But because, you know, it's going to such a good cost, I personally will buy this set. Um, I do have family members who have had breast cancer, so I know it's a big fight. So hopefully even just buy, if, if I can buy a set, something I absolutely love and still and contribute towards the fight, I think that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. So unfortunately, Unfortunately, my discount code wizard doesn't work on this, but there are other items on his website which Discount code wizard will definitely work on it will give you a small a small discount 5% Let's see and What else? Who is next on my list? 
Oh yeah. Last but not the least um, is Keep.io. Keep.io's owner is Danny, also known as Baking Pie. He is actually a QMK collaborator. We, he's one of our newer ones, actually. He's our, he's not the newest one, but he's the second to the newest one, I believe. And he sells all of these cool items like Iris keyboards, Q frequency, Elite C. And I guess now that he's an actual collaborator, he, he also sells Proton Cs. Um, if you use, if you use discount code wizard hat, you can get up to 15% off on some select items. I think it's the iris and the Q frequency. Those are the ones that, and the Nyquist too, I believe. Yeah, um, I have, he actually sent me quite a few products for giveaway. So in the future, I'll have some of them. I do a monthly giveaway. So he's one of the contributors to that. But the latest thing that I bought from Keep.io, actually, the latest thing I bought was this. Peel away sockets for Pro Micro. The, this, this by itself is super, super helpful. Super, super helpful. They're, they are cheap. And if you guys caught my Saturday build stream, I built my little Mac Merlin board and it uses a Pro Micro. Um, the great thing about this is with the, with the peel away sockets, if you decide to use your Pro Micro for something else, it's relatively easy to pull out. And for those of you who actually have, de have tried to desolder a Pro Micro, you know how painful it is. So definitely, definitely consider these peel away sockets. They are fairly pricey at $249 for one strip. Um, one strip is 82 pins. A one pro micro takes 24 pins, so I guess well, I, I guess it's not that pricey. It's two, two, two forty-nine for essentially three boards that use pro micros. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Well, that are, that's all of my sponsors on the show. Without them, the show would not be possible. I thank them for a lot of their support. If you, come, if, if, if you go to meetups a lot, you'll probably see them too. <laughs> that sounds crazy convenient. It is crazy convenient, I, I guarantee you. But as I discovered on Saturday, not all keyboards have holes big enough to support these, these sockets. Um, I tried to build a Sweet 16 from 1UP Keyboards this weekend and the holes were too small. So I don't know if that's just because of the footprint they used. Maybe they used a standard footprint. Who knows? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a PCB designer, but just, just keep that in mind that not all boards that support Pro Micro, Proton C, or Elite C will be able to use those sockets. Okay, all right, here's the coding part. The coding part, let me just set this up really quick. Okay, yeah, this, this is the part that I really like. I'm gonna write firmware for the exant while typing on an exant. You missed me building the PCB hat. Well, yeah, it's, um, I didn't quite finish it, to be honest. Um, well, I got firmware written. I think I'm going to call it like the wizard token. And once I actually have stuff finalized, these will probably be on sale on an, sorry, um, on an, on an upcoming website, on, on an upcoming store, or as just little freebies for like meetups who knows um the problem with my build on saturday on saturday was that i think some of my leds are broken so let me just plug this in really really quick so you guys can see you guys can see but hold on 
the finished product will have my little logo be on here like that and the LEDs will be for e each of my stars and each of the keys and the and basically it's I guess it it's turning out into a tap dance dev board basically you would hold this to turn on toggle to um you would hold this to turn to to toggle RGBs on and off you would tap it once to change modes and I think to, if you want it if you tap it twice you can change like the hue so yeah that's that's how it is this was built for me by Scully of Clueboard and I'm just gonna show you how far I got but I have broken LEDs so didn't get very far I did write firmware though so I guess I guess that's good There we go. See, see, see. Look. I know you guys can't see it very much, but it's currently in RGB mode. So to turn it off, there we go. Turn it back on. And then you click it once again. Yeah. Um, Olivia was actually watching my show, and she gave me permission to put this into Via, and I was like, that that would be so funny. But at the same time, to, to fully make use of this board, you need to use Tap Dance. And Tap Dance is not available on VIA. It's not available on QMK Configurator as well. So it's kind of like you really need to code it up. So by doing that, I already kind of shut out a lot of people who, who may want to buy this. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's... That's it. That's it. My little project that I'm working on. I'll probably replace those LEDs soon. Here we go. Let me just update things a bit. Whew. Oh yeah, speaking of QMK, this month is a special month. And by special month, I mean, it is Hacktoberfest. Here we go. Okay. So Hack Hacktoberfest is a event run by DigitalOcean and Dev in which if you, if you contribute four, four PRs to an open source repo has to be in, in GitHub I believe um, you can get a limited edition t-shirt and last year's t-shirt was red I think I actually haven't seen what this year's t-shirt looks like hmm. but yeah as, as long as you open four PRs to any repo you can get this t-shirt and if you contribute to QMK if you actually contribute to QMK, is that, is that it? October QMK? QMK.com is for sale. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what have I found here, guys? What did I find? There we go. Hacktoberfest.qmk.fm. There, there we go. There we go. If you actually contribute to QMK, we have additional in incentives. You can win a, or you can earn a QMK t-shirt. Uh, we have lots of qualifications that, that allow you to do this. The easiest way to get a t-shirt is to donate $15 to C-Keys, which is the first keyboard nonprofit. Um, you can interact four times with the QMK repo in any of these great ways. Review, suggest significant changes, make a comment and issue PR that contributes to the overall discussion. Open a PR that documents any new features. Uh, we need translation or fix us a bug in an issue labeled Hacktoberfest. So yeah, we are, we are in need of um, tra translations. For example, one thing I would like to see translations for would be the QMK configurator. 
you guys see all these keys full source key map keyboard layout our little blurb here about potatoes load default firmware get qmk toolbox um we would love to see that in other languages other than english so i believe we had some russian translations put in already we've had some we had a filipino we we, we we had a tagalog translation put in already which i thought was funny um for those of you who don't know i am ethnically filipino i have family in the philippines i was just home a few months ago and um seeing the translations i was just like oh my gosh this is so cool i looked at it and because i don't know um the philippines is a third world nation like we didn't we don't actually like the philippines is known for travel and agriculture we're not known for our high-tech uh, achievements and all that so we don't actually have translations for words like download compile firmware all those were still the same which i found hilarious <laughs> but yeah if you if you know languages other than English, um, we could use your translation skills. Xbash says, maybe I can translate to Espanol. Yes, we actually already have translations for that, but you've seen QMK documentation. There is a whole lot of it. If you are able to, if you are able to help out in any way, we could use you. Titan says, Korean might be good. I agree. We... There was a small period in QMK history sometime this year in which we were actually um, seeing who we were like, like actually we, we were tracking this website, QMK Configurator, to see where in the world people were using it, right? And so we used it for a week and we found that within that week or two, um, no one from Korea ever used QMK Configurator. <laughs> But the reason why we haven't continued past that was as we were doing this, as we were implementing this, we discovered that we would not be GDPR compliant. So we said, nope, can't do that. So we no longer do that. We no longer have metrics as to who is using QMK configurator, unfortunately. But yeah, as Yan says, we could use Asian languages. Asian languages being like Chinese, like, okay, so I, I contributed Chinese translations and I grew up in Taipei, Taiwan. So my grasp of the language is actually more, more spoken than written. So if any of you guys can read Mandarin or who are more of a, more fluent than I am, I could definitely use a few eyes on my translations. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I figured the more languages we have, the more accessible it is to people, especially if the documentation is translated. So yeah. Titan, why are you crying? Are you crying because Koreans don't use UMK? <laughs> okay, all right. Keep saying I'm gonna port this board, but I, but I always don't do it. There we go. I just... Let's see. Okay. There we go. Welcome to my terminal. I use power line and what do I use? What color screen do you use? Oh, this is Solarize Dark. I'm a big fan of Solarize Dark. I actually have the key set that I have never opened up because every time I want to put it on a keyboard, I'm like, no, I can't. It's too beautiful. <laughs> One of these days I will. Okay. So when you are creating a keyboard in QMK for the, for the first time, the easiest way to do it is to go into the util directory and run the new keyboard script. Boom, keyboard name, exempt, type AVR, PS2 AVRGB. My name is Mac Merlin and boom. So then when, after the script is run, 
you should then have a a new keyboard in the keyboards directory called Xent. So let's take a look at it really quick. CD Xent. Let's take a look at what it's been what's been created here. Okay, so these are all default files, and let me just make it larger for everyone to see. It's got the rules, bootload HID, all that is good. Okay, so one thing I've discovered, guys, for boot mapper client boards, you have this thing called USB config.h. And from what I've seen, what I've experienced is, you have this, winkeyless.kr, PS2 AVR GB. Um, do not change this. Well, you can change it and you'll be fine, but you will be locked into QMK. Um, I believe the Win Keyless Boot Mapper Client app actually searches for these things. So if you don't have this programmed as a Win Keyless and PS2 AVR GB, you can't use boot mapper client ever again until you change this over. So yeah, don't, don't change that. Um, I am guilty of changing a few of the boards. So if you, if you have a boot mapper client board and you can no longer use boot mapper client after using QMK, I am partly to blame, <laughs> but yeah, let's see. What do we have here? Let me just fix this all up before I do a preliminary commit. Uh, another thing weird about this board or this particular build is that the, the, the alphas are silent reds and everything else, oh, okay, so, so the alphas and the arrows are silent reds. Everything else is white clicky. I, I don't know why. Like, if anything, I would assume that the alphas are what you would want to be clicky, but who knows? <laughs> okay. Let's see what else needs to change here. All good. All good. Oh, right, here we go. We can change this up a little bit. Manufacturer. Who manufactured this PCB? I'm going to say it's quad cube because that's what's written on the PCB itself. Look at that. This quad cube. Quad cube. I have no clue who quad cube is, but apparently his name is James Oi. Ool. Is that an I or an L? It's an L. James O O L. I don't know who this guy is. I don't believe I've ever talked to him in the community. I've never seen a post from him either. So who knows? I'm just going to say the manufacturer is quad cube. Let's do that. Quad cube. Keyboard is exempt. We'll call it 65% keyboard. RGB nums? I don't know actually. How many RGB nums are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I almost forgot how to count. 18. There we go. So all of this is very vanilla. Um, I don't think the Atmega32 4 does this either, but this this is the default win keyless layout. OK, 
Okay. I should say in key map. Okay. Yeah, I think we're good. We can do a preliminary commit. If you guys so desire, you guys can check out my branch and follow along. Initial commit. Boom. Did I? No, I didn't. Git push origin feature exact. There we go. It is on my branch now. Jan says good port. This is very good port that I'm drinking. <laughs> okay, okay. How have I not noticed the new keyboard script? Most people have not noticed the new keyboard script, mainly because <laughs> most people don't port boards on a weekly basis. So I'm, I'm very well attuned to it, but here we go, guys. I, I just showed you another automated script, right? So that generates all the files that we need. And all we had to do was edit like the readme and a few things. Accent.h. This is the file you need to pay attention to. This thing right here, the layout macro. This is where you can take uh, Mr. Keebs, the, the Mr. Keebs output, this guy right here. You can take all this, copy, Oops. and paste. And it's not rendering correctly because I think he missed a few things. Keeps missing that. Is he missing that really? Uh oh, what am I missing? I mean, I don't know what I'm missing. <laughs> Have you seen our new Python CLI? Oh yeah, that's another one that's good. That is another one that is very good, but hold on, let me just... I always need to figure out what I'm missing. I feel like I hit this last week too, but I can't remember what I'm forgetting. <laughs> okay. What am I missing here? Mm. Well, that seems correct. Commas are in the right places, but that guy doesn't seem to be happy. Hmm, okay. This is, this is a formatting issue, not that his code is wrong, just that I am probably missing a... There's something missing here. Nope, definitely not that. up reference material on my other screen just to compare it and I'm not seeing any difference I probably have a stupid comma added somewhere where it shouldn't be there we go the stupid space that's what I was missing holy cow 
Okay. There we go. There we go. Okay, we're good. We're good. I am going to give feedback to, to Mr. Keebs and be like, hey, you need to have an, an extra slash in, in order to do that. Okay, perfect. So, what do I need? Okay, I need to count the number of rows and the number of columns. Rows one, two, three, four, five, six, six rows and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen columns. And you can set that here. Six rows and fourteen columns. And then you need to extract it from Mr. Keebs again. Row pins. Row pins. Actually, do those need to be capitalized? I feel like I always capitalize them, so let's keep let's keep them capitalized. There we go. And column pins. Another thing about his script is that I I don't know what algorithm he's using to come up with the columns. I think he's trying to match like the physical layout as much as he can. But typically, typically on a boot mapper client board, um, B0 should be row zero, which this is correct in, and A0 should be column zero. And the way it's like that, the way it's like that is because the switch that is connected to row B0 and column A0 is your reset key. So at this point, we kind of need to, hold on. I, I actually don't like the way it's written out. So we're just gonna fix it up a bit. So, and the reason why is I like to do this. I like to actually label what rows I'm talking about because I can't count and having it written out for me really, really helps. No, actually that's A. A, B, C, D. Okay, perfect. That's what I like. A, B, C, D. Maybe Hacktoberfest. It's a good way to get a t-shirt and learn about Git and contributing with the README to Espanol. Yes. Next batch. I didn't. I didn't even know that you knew Espanol. But like I said, we could use all the help possible. So one thing to keep in mind when doing um, translations is because most of us on, on, the Q, on the QMK staff speak English. Most of us use that as our native language. So when there is a new change in which there will be many changes, um, we'll update the documentation. So that means there's a possibility that the translations in the future will not keep up with the changes in the English documentation. So I don't know how we're gonna handle that because maybe, like the documentation right now is pretty spot on. It's gone through a lot of eyes, but I suspect maybe like 
if things start to lag, especially if it's, if it's a language that not too many people speak, what's going to happen is the documentation in that language will maybe be like two or three revisions behind the English one. And that's the, that's the difficult aspect of it, I guess. <laughs> so Xbash and anyone else who is translating, um, I guess consider that as like a way to get more work in, into the repo. Just whenever you see a documentation change, make sure it's changed in the appropriate language as well. I actually paid for Winware, says you're a wizard, Harry. Thank you. I am a wizard. Or at least I like to think that I am. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So I have all of these set. And the other thing we want to do is set the key map. We need to have an actual key map so this code will compile. And here's another thing we can borrow. You can actually go into the QMK firmware. Go into QMK firmware. We go to layouts. Where are you? layouts look for default and look for 65 ANSI I'm gonna st steal the key map from there this guy this guy and I'm just gonna replace all of this with it there we go like so layout 65 ANSI which is the layout that we have layout 65 ANSI there we go, there we go. I should be able to compile this firmware right now. Maybe. Make, make what? Make exant colon default. And I should be able to compile this successfully. But first, I am gonna take a drink. Cause I'm thirsty. <laughs> Mm. There. So if you've been following along since the beginning, you'll notice that I haven't really coded anything. Like all of this was just use one tool to, to generate all the necessary files use another tool to generate the content of the file so it's like i don't know maybe maybe one of us collaborators can actually take one of mr keeb's actual script and put it as part of qmk so that you could not only create the necessary files using the new keyboard one but if you pass it a raw file from KLE, you could essentially do what I'm doing by hand right now. So let's see. Boom. And look at that. Look at that. It compiled. Woo! Karcha. I just built the first Exent QMK firmware. Let's Let's make sure that it actually works, right? There we go. Let's make sure it actually works. Let's put it on the spare PCB first before I put it on the actual board. Okay, um, I did say that... What did I say? I said the reset is the pin connected... The, the, the switch connected to B0 and A0. In this case, it would be 0D. So that guy is him. It's, it's backspace. You hold backspace to reset this board. Let's see if that's correct. Let's see. And since I only have one... Oh, no, actually, there we go. I found one. Mini B. Let's flash this, see if it works. 
the moment, the moment of truth. The moment of truth. Uh oh, something just happened. Uh oh. Looks like my camera lost its its input. Let me just plug that back in. Come back alive. There we go. Okay. I'm going to plug it into a different USB port just in case. Let's plug it into my hub. Into my hub. And my handy reset wire. Let's do that. Oh, hold on. Let's just check. Oh, perfect. Okay. There we go. Hopefully this resets correctly. Okay. And I can do make exact colon default colon flash. And with any luck, this board will be flashed. And I can just verify that I did my switch matrix correctly. So, boom. It's flashing that backspace key was the, was the reset button. It's flashing. There we go. The board is flashed. And all LEDs work. This is the first Xant that runs QMK powered firmware so Karcha Karcha you can if you ever decide to sell this board you can say it is the first exit to run QMK were to sell for $2,000 okay I should actually test that it works right <laughs> not, not just I flashed it <laughs> okay 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 there we go let us bring up QMK configurator, test keyboard. Now this is the real test that things worked. Okay, so let me just bring up my key map really quick. Um, that's a pretty basic key map. Good luck with that pricing, 3000 QMK bucks, yeah. I, I am the owner of several boards that were that are first Q, QMK powered due to the nature of my work pretty much <laughs> but I doubt anyone would actually want to pay any of that pricing I have the first QMK powered Jane V2 And the first QMK powered Sprit Face W. Let's see, what else do I have? I have the first QMK powered Budget 96. Uh, first QMK powered Skog Light. <laughs> you know, someone, someone was saying, Merlin, why don't you just like, you know, keep QMK in its own branch like it keep keep your port in its own branch and don't ever submit it to QMK <laughs> I'm like ah, that's not very nice Oop, something popped I don't know what popped so far so good guys my tab key worked So far, so good.
triggering his right control for some reason. Why? Folks, I believe I got it correct. <laughs> Talisman says, it's, it's a little like coming in second in a one leg man ass kicking contest. <laughs> yeah, they're right. It's another successful port. Woo! Right. Shall we try porting this board? We actually try putting it so I can actually type on it. Uh Karcha. Um do you want me to leave this this guy as boot mapper client or am I free to port QMK on it? Oh, he says do it. Okay, I'll do it. But since that's the keyboard I'm using, I'm actually gonna have to have to actually connect a different board on. Good yeah. It's in guys. The event now has QMK. Well, not quite yet, because they still have ha have to submit this. Um, there's some things that need to change before I can even put it, put it on this board. For example, um, what I have right now is just the basic layout, like the most basic of 65%. So the good thing about that is that QMK has a bunch of default layouts, such as the most basic 65%, where it's like a 2U backspace, three 1Us before the arrow key, your typical 2.25 left shift, 1.75U right shift, um, ANSI enter, and all that good stuff. That's the really basic stuff. And one, actually this is probably one of the major reasons I use QMK. You can do this in rules.mk. Layouts equals 65 ANSI, which is the layout I have chosen here. As you can see. What this does is if I have a community layout, like I can write one key map, one key map that uses this layout, and every single board in the QMK repo that has this layout, 65 underscore ANSI, will be able to use my key map. I don't have to, you know, like for example, if I had 10 65 percent, I wouldn't need to write a key map for each one of them. I could just have one and it would work on all 10 boards, no matter if it's a Exant, a Canoe, a it's another popular 65. Adoro 67. Oh, actually, that's that's not a 65. A um a mass drop all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's just um you know that's that's one of the benefits. 65 ANSI. I'm gonna add that in. I'm actually gonna push this to my branch. Thank you, Mr. Keeps, for making this easy. There we go. Let's do that.
Okay, it's pushed to my to my branch now. Woo but as I said, this board, this board is a little bit different. Look at that. It doesn't have a two U. It has one U. So 65 ANSI does not work with that. I'm gonna have to do something a little bit different. I'm actually going to start making a layout called all. One U backspace. Yeah, one U backspace. So I need to figure out what that key is. So I guess it's back to pulling out that PCB that I just conveniently put away. Do this really quick. Do this really quick. Okay, multimeter, multimeter. There we go. Uh. Okay, so it looks like the K0D, which is what the backspace is, is the first key that shows up. And the next key is not even in the same row, nor is it in the same column. That's going to be fun. This is going to be row... Row Row B six Row B six and column Row B six and column A zero. So that would be Look at that. There's an extra Oof. Oof. Oh my word. I have to redo that. Okay, I think I just saw a, a a drawback to using Mr. Keep's tool. Once I add a B6, it's going to shift everything. Well, actually, no, that's not true. I'm just drunk. There we go. Problem solved. Problem solved. B6, and, and what did I say the column was? Column was... Column was A0. So it would be six. Yeah, let's up that row. 6D, the 6D. Let's add that 60. K60. K60. Bingo. Like so. And I need to add a whole new row. A whole new row.
What are you singing? K6D right there. K6D. TMK Mermaid. No, that's not Aladdin. Okay, okay. There we go. I got it. I got it. Let me just make sure this compiles really quick. Oh, nope, I don't want it to flash. Layout 65 and C. Excess elements. I hate you. There we go. Fixed. Fixed. Porting with ports and Merlin karaoke in one stream. <laughs> QMK Alibaba. Yes, why not? Why not? Okay. Alright. I got I got it. I got it. So now layout all is not complete but I really don't like the layout that I have here I keep pressing this for backspace but in fact this is backspace it's um HHKB style so I'm just gonna program this the way I want it to be and we'll just actually before I change anything let me just commit that. Split backspace requires an additional row. Let's just push that over. Okay. And we are going to Tweak that a bit. Tweak that a bit. I'm gonna make them both, both backspace. There we go. Great, let's flash it. Okay, here we go, guys. Take this board. Gotta pull out the clue board again. Pull out the clue board. Clue board. Clue board. So I have something to press enter with. And then we are going to, to press, it was K0D, so it's actually this key that I need to hold down. All right, Karcha, this will be the second QMK board, the second QMK powered Xant. You won't be able to sell it as much as the first one. Maybe about 10% less. Here we go, let's flash it. It is flashing. There we go. And it's the default red color, let's see. Okay, now this is the true test. I want to be absolutely sure. There we go. Test. Okay.
Uh oh. Guess I screwed that one up. Have to figure that out. Okay. Just have to figure that one out. on the mods. Okay, okay. Let's just fix that up really quick. actually a 4-2, not a 4-3. Four 4-2? Four Try 4-2. Okay, 4-2. It's faster than actually trying to probe it. Uh, this is already not. It's kind of hard to plug in, guys. There we go. It takes a lot to like stick it in because it's it's kind of like a weird hole. Yeah, it's flashing again. Flash, flash, flash. Okay. We suck. Did I get that correct? I got it correct. It was 42. Okay. I'll change that on the 65 ANSI as well. It was 42, not 43. Perfect. Okay. Change K forty three to K forty two. Another thing I need to do is to start adding in what I have dreaded this entire stream. The thing I've dreaded the most, and that is to add ISO support. Why, Karcha? Why? Why have you done this to me? I'm gonna add ISO support. <laughs> okay. Is there even a layout 65 ISO in QMK? I actually don't even know. Yep, there is a 65 ISO. Okay, never mind. I'm gonna have to. Put that in. Okay. But before we do ISO, it's good to do the universal layout all. So in terms of ISO support, we gotta do K31. comes with ISO support. Oh. Um, it's this enter key. Okay, that one, I'm actually gonna need the PCB again. Keep putting it away only to take it back out. Oh 
almost there. Almost done. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna need to take another drink for this. I can't handle it. Mm. Okay. Enter key is over there. So that ISO key should be um, 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 um there we go okay at least it's on the same row it's on row two that's good at least it is on the same row I just have to find column Ooh, found it three 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 it is the third pin a one is it really a one Yep. Pin A1, which would make it pin C. So it's 2C. 2C. So it's right before. There we go. K2C. Okay, I think I've got layout all covered. Now I can actually make the ISO layout. ISO sorry, not sorry. Go away, Zeno. <laughs> we actually have to get going to work. Okay, well, thank you for joining in. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I was able to finish the port before you went to work. Like. I finished the port for the most important layout, so I guess that's fine. Guys, he's leaving. I, I don't need to put the ISO in. Oh, dang, he's still on. Okay, guys, I'm going to have to add that ISO. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> you, didn't you didn't hear that. I, I didn't say anything. Okay. Let's put 65 ISO in. 65 ISO. There we go. And what we need to do is take out the keys that are not right, such as the K60. Boom. It's fine. And we need to take out what was formerly the pipe key, so that would be K1D. Looking at this correctly, yes, I am. Let's take out K1D. So K60 and K1D are gone. I think I've got the important layouts taken taken in. Um, I know for a fact that the exent takes a lot more layouts. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Oof. Look at that split space bar. We can do that. 
that's most likely gonna go into the into the split actually oh man look look at that have you guys ever seen like a full 2.75 u on a on a 65 percent I feel like one of the main draws for for 65 percent is that you have an up arrow key but the fact that you have a full size left um a full size right shift kind of defeats I, I I think that it defeats the purpose of having a 65 percent so that's that's kind of weird oh man okay oh such a swiss cheese board look at that bottom row what the heck okay i have the main layout so we're good in terms of the most basic support i do need to at least add in those split space bar support let me take care of that now and add it to the layout wall. The answer is mod tap. Mod tap. What about mod tap? Okay. That seems to be a decent one. No way. Okay, good, you're good. For a second there, I thought that the split space bar was, was on a different row. I was gonna be like, no. So good thing they're all on four. That's fine. One, two. Okay. That was pin C5. Column C5. Interesting. Column C5 is 4, so that's K44. Okay. Okay. K44. K44. The other one is going to be one, two, three, four. C7. So K46. Okay. Okay. I think I've got all the keys available for a universal layout. Okay, just put that up. Let's clean up the code a little bit. Align things. Okay. Looks 
good. Looks good. Looks good. Add in split spacebar support for layout all. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So before I can actually file this as a PR into QMK, I do need to support QMK configurator. And all of that goes into a file called info.json. And with any luck, I should just be able to do this. Let me grab the 65 ANSI. Oops. 65 ANSI. Convert it into an info.json. Layout 65 ANSI. Just need to do a layout all now. Or actually, let's do the 65 ISO. go. That's a good one. Sixty five ISO. And last but not the least, sixty five all. which I actually need to edit my keyboard layout editor. Oh wow, I've been at this for two hours, two hours and 15 minutes. I almost have this done. So close, so close. And okay, I need to do the split space bar. Then add a 1.25 there. And then a 2.75. 2.75. And we should be good for layout all. Yeah, that looks good. Raw data. Where are you? Okay, there we go. I was joking with Yan a week ago saying, hey, um, porting with ports is basically just watching me use online tools with au which auto-generate all of this for you. <laughs> and yeah, it's becoming more and more like that. Um, if we invest some time in it, we could probably just create a tool that goes from, you know, figuring out what the matrix is figuring out from what the matrix is and it'll just create all the firmware. So 
just like that. It, it would be really cool if like we went from there and then it was like, hey, let's get via support in. <laughs> Okay, let's let's actually check that I have this correct. But then we wouldn't get the banter. Yeah, I know, right? Because you win some and you lose some. So control shift I. Let's exclusive exact. There we go. That's what we want. Info.json. Layout all, perfect. Layout 65 ANSI, looks good. 65 ISO, looks great as well. Yay, we got it, we got it. For the most part, this port is done. Um, I definitely could probably add these layouts, but you know, it's too much work. Mm, yeah. Let's see. Check the translation MS. Check the translation Microsoft? <laughs> <laughs> Add QMK configurator support. Okay, we're good, we're good. I think this port is pretty much done. Um, I know Karcha wanted me to add a particular layout, but like a layout that he uses, but I'm not, I'm not a fan of having layouts named after people. You know, um, maybe I'll check this in right now. I'll follow a pull request and then I'll have him make a key map of what he wants. Like, I still need to ship this board to the guy, but I'll probably do, do like a typing test of sorts before I ship it over. We'll see. Though, um... I would say it's not really a good board to do a typing test on. Like I mentioned it earlier, but here, let me pause the music. Listen to that space bar. You can hear all that rattle. It's not even lubed properly. Let's see how about the other modifiers. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think these. I don't think the mods are lubed at all. Oof. That's very unfortunate. Okay. All right. It's unfortunate. Let me just. Put this back and I'm gonna file the PR. I believe I already have the, the necessary four to get a Hacktoberfest t-shirt, but you know, I'm not in QMK so that I can get t-shirts. I'll file more than the necessary four. Let's see. Oh, why aren't you switching screens? Uh oh. Oh, you know, it's not switching screens because I haven't even plugged the board in. Let me plug the board in first, guys. So hard. There we go. 
Okay. Let's follow that PR. Actually, I think I want to make the key map a little more usable just to be. Actually, that's not the scene I wanted. I wanted this scene right here. And I didn't want it to be all. So that's not going to work. There we go. Sixty-five ANSI, like so, and I actually want a second layer. Let's add a second layer. Layer one, oops, that was not what I wanted to do. There we go. Let's call that layer one. And let's make it a little more useful. F2, F3, F4, F5, F6, F7, F8, F9. F10, F11, F12, KC delete, there we go, KC trans, okay, uh, where should I put my function, my GUI? Now my MO key, I mean, let's get rid of that alt key. Let's do that. Let's put that there. Just like that. Mm. I'm going to drink uh, just a tiny bit more. I'm not trying to get drunk tonight. But look, look, I've drank quite a bit. This is my favorite. One of my favorites. drinking just that much. Oh, I realized I didn't show you how much I, I put in. Just that much. I'm trying to savor it just a little bit. <laughs> but for the most part, um, this board has RGB underglow and backlight so let's just add that here I always need need a key map reference because I forget I completely forget step let's do that bl step and then bl ink and bl deck bl ink and bl deck and let's do the rgbs rgb tog RGB mod and RGB R mod. RGB mod. RGB R mod. KC trans. Let's do that. And the hue is Huey and HUD. and RGB sad. Oops. RGB 
buy an RGB bag. Oops, what did I do? Okay, let's buy an SPD. Let's buy an RGB SPD. Okay, that should be the most basic ones used and I am just going to copy and paste Casey trans everywhere Every, everywhere else And let's see, where should I put the reset? I'm gonna put it in tab Q W E R. Make R the reset key. Like so. There we go. And hopefully this this will still build. Of course it didn't build. Backslash new line at end of file. Layout 65 ISO. Line 54? Really? I don't know what's wrong. Backslash new line at end of file. Just need an extra space there. Oh, okay. Um, oh, 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 okay. I think I missed a Casey trans. Talisman says, I'm headed out. Lake here in the east. Thanks for the stream, and we'll speak to you soon. Yeah. Fixed it. Fixed it. Just... Just me doing some stupid formatting things. Here we go. What else? There we go. Let's 
much nicer. Make default key map more usable. Okay. All right. I think we're good. We are good. I'm going to file that PR. Let's file that PR. Less than a minute ago. Perfect. Compare and pull request. New keyboard exempt. New BMC to QMK conversion using KLE to QMK tool by Mr. Keeps. Yeah, that's good. Labels keyboard. Good. Um, yeah. Create pull request. This is a keyboard. My code follows the code style. I've tested the changes and I've read the contributing document. Woo! All right. All right. See how long did that take from start to finish? 7.30 till 10.05 p.m. 8.30, 9.30, two and a half hours. Okay, I guess um, even with the automated tools, it still takes a while. I, I attribute that to the, to the actual probing of the matrix. I noticed taking one layout took, took an hour and the other two layouts probably took an additional 15 to 30 minutes. So yeah, that's a that's about right. You should add in all all the banter that I do. But yeah, I'm not going to wait for anyone to approve or merge this. So here we go. Thank you everyone for joining in. Um, I'm gonna finish my drink. Actually, this might be a better view. There we go. There we go. Thank you everyone for joining in. I ported over the Exent, a board that came out in, I'd say, two, 2018. 2018. It, if you follow along with the group I, there were some hiccups hiccups along the way but it eventually started making its its way to customers and Karcha is one of them so special thanks to Karcha for letting me use his board he hasn't even typed on this yet I'm the first one typing on it so thank you very very much Karcha but we have converted the bootmapper client over to QMK and RC Angel says congrats now how would I convert it um, you can use the tools like QMK Configurator. Once my pull request has been merged in, you should be able to see it on our site. On here. Once my pull request has been submitted or has has been merged, you'll be able to to see it here. So basically, just click on keyboard, type in exact see it's not there yet but we have boards such as the tgr jane available you know it's kind of like the same architecture but yeah that's how that's how you would use it so yeah the board's been ported over i'm just finishing the last of my alcohol here hmm <laughs> Once again, this is the Otima, the Wars o Otima 10. Definitely in my top three list of ports that I've ever drank on this stream. I've become 
quite the port connoisseur, <laughs> I think. Um, if anyone's in NorCal this coming November 9th for the meetup and would like some port recommendations, um, come talk to me and we'll go to the bar together. <laughs> Yeah, I'll probably do a typing test of this board though it's not gonna sound very good because it's not built correctly I'm actually gonna reach out to Karcha after this and be like hey man do you want me to rebuild this board um, he's an ISO user so more than likely he's gonna do that anyway but we shall see what he says anyway Let's see if you guys like more of what this channel is all about and want to continue supporting me definitely definitely please hit up my donation link in my affiliate links to my left if you want to know more about what I do um, some of my upcoming projects such as the wizard token or GMK gold rush definitely follow me on on my discord server down below and actually, that link is wrong. The newest one is here. There we go. Um, definitely follow me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or Twitter. Though to be fair, my YouTube ha hasn't gotten much much attention lately. It's just been more of like a, a dumping ground for these Twitch streams. But I hope to have a review in the near future. But hope you guys have a good rest of your week, and I will see you this coming Saturday for our Magic Build Stream. Um, the board that I am building hasn't quite arrived yet, so I'm not going to say anything yet. And But I will say that there might be a giveaway. It is that time of month, so there might be a giveaway. Um, I will see you guys all the following week. Goodbye. And good night.